So in that class on landscape and gender, I would say that the sort of core of the core idea of the difference between men interpreting the landscape and women interpret, interpreting it is that men are really, really comfortable with space. And I would say women tend to photograph place, a place that they're familiar with, that is their scale, their garden, their uh, town, a place that something has happened in, or they put themselves in, in a larger place that then they, they occupy. Very different from the way males put female, uh, their girlfriends in the landscape. Um, the girlfriend ends up being, or the model, ends up being a representation of Mother Earth and the sexual other. Women put themselves in, but they're, they very seldom get the guys to take their pants off and stand in the landscape. They just, I, I'm waiting for it. Good. But, so space and place. So that's one of the, the ideas of, you know. They're just, and the numbers are pitiful in terms of the way landscape has been defined. And it's one of the areas in photography that I've that I have paid attention to. I remember when I first was doing this lecture, um, many years ago now, there were two books that I had in my library. One was by John Sarkowski of American uh, Landscapes. That had, I, I meant, to, I didn't bring the numbers, but if I remember correctly, it had 44 images in the book and three were by women. Then there was a book of, of just called Landscape, which was a more global look that Bill Brandt had uh, edited. And that, I think, had five, um, but, an even, but a sort of equal number of male photographers, about 50 men to five women. Um, both books used the same Dorothea Lang of the house with the, the, um, the abandoned house with the plowed fields in front of it. Um, there's a new book coming out by um, Bill Ewing from, who was the curator, I think, at ICP, and um, it's called Landmark, With, and in it is, this is the blurb, it's not out yet, and I can't wait to get it and do the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> this is how they advertise it, Gursky, Bertinsky, Friedlander, and Mizrak. <laughs> And so I wrote him and asked him, um, <coughs> and um, any women photographers? And he wrote back a rather nice and detailed letter that I have here somewhere. Oh, look here. Uh, <laughs> later, during, I, I'll do it later, over some wine. And, um, where he says he just doesn't pay attention to names. You know, he's looking for images and new ideas and stuff like that. But then, then there's, in, my, in our neck of the woods, and if you haven't been to Pier 24 up in San Francisco, do go. It is a remarkable place. It's free, but you have to have a reservation. It is the collection of um, mostly Andy Pilaro's collection. He's only started collecting about 10 years ago, and he's a mess thousands of pictures. Uh, but the record is not very good, even though the shows are magnificent. Um, I had the numbers for, they did a, um, a show called From Here or Here or something like that. It was sort of a Bay Area photography. Now, Jim Goldberg, granted, had one array of work that had about a hundred and something images in it, but there were about 600 images in the show, including all these little bitty ones by uh, Jim Goldberg. And out of all those, only 15 pictures by women. Five women were represented, not even Imogen. And for a show about the Bay Area? And in their recent 
um, show, which is called A Sense of Place. Even though I was talking about space and place. Um, there are 261 images, only 26 by women, which is 9%. And it's, it's, um, okay. So there's some issues that I think um, when I was driving, I was making some notes. <laughs> uh, I, I interpreted them when I stopped. And here, here are some of, some of the issues. Okay. Uh, just the general thing of uh, gender, and it's a man's world. I keep thinking of that uh, James Brown song. And even though there are a lot more women curators, I always thought that that was mainly the problem, that the guys were making all the selections, the Sarkowskis and stuff. But um, now we have a lot of women curators. And I haven't seen that great a change yet. And, and I think it may be because our whole culture is so male-dominated that even if you're a sensitive woman, you're not challenging everything that comes along. You just think that men do more landscapes, for instance. I mean, it's just, you know, it's safer for them or, you know, the, they climb more mountains or mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. you know. But, mm -hmm. but not questioning the genre of photography and why can't we have pictures of gardens? Are you talking about um, right now about ex exhibitors in general or just landscape in terms of what curators? I'm talking about both, but, okay. but it usually comes down to landscape because I've done more yeah. research into that. Um, and I mean, photography is one of the more democratic mediums. So that's a good thing. So you would think that there would be more parity than there is. Okay, then there's education and, you know, probably 50% of my students are women. And issues around education, which I think is a problem, and I'm part of the problem, is we've churned out too many MFAs. Um, there's very few teaching jobs. Um, the cost of education is outrageous. The, I hope everybody in this room is going to talk to your politicians about getting um, student loans readjustable because it's one of the travesties. If, if you can readjust the mortgage on your house, you should be able to do the student loan thing. Um, also, in feminist politics have entered the college scene very, very heavily. But, and within photography to a certain extent. But unfortunately, they have no sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's very theoretically and conceptually based, um, which I find a little unpleasant. As much as feminists are saying. Okay, one of the big problems is the market. And galleries are being squeezed. They have to not only have a place that they rent, and the rents are high, so they have to sell expensive art to be able to keep going. And now they have to go to all these fairs, art fairs everywhere. So they have to have a second staff that can travel and move all the art. So the whole pricing of, of artwork has really gone up. And, and also, the, the collectors are not collecting so much out of love anymore. Maybe some of them are. But now it's an investment. So that narrows. They really want to get you know, the 1% the thing applies to today's conversation as well. Um, then, 
Then, you know, the Vivian Meyer mm, thing. It, especially if you're a woman photographer, it helps if you're dead. <laughs> okay, so we can get into that some more. Um, and I've also been thinking about the, the, the community and the gallery and the marketplace and things. And the idea of community theaters and Broadway, you know, the theater community is what the f entire photo community used to be. I mean, Ted and I at one point knew about every fine art photographer, at least by name, in the country. And now, of course, it's much bigger. Things, things have changed. We've got Europe in play, Asia in play, in a much more greater way than we used to. Um, but even with Broadway, now in like the marketplace, we're, we're dealing with Hollywood and the star system and these million dollar productions. So I think the local theater is not out of business yet. But it's a diff there's a different league now in play. Then the digital thing has been, uh, I see many of you of a certain age in this room might know what kind of challenges that has made for us. And I think women, I did not design most of these machines. <laughs> um, so I, one of the things that I think all the digital and the new modes of getting your work out there, Instagram and all these things that I really have not kept up with. But I think one of the things that has happened that there is much more interest in the the non-tradition, the non-silver and hands-on and handmade artworks, hand-colored, stitched on fabric. I mean, you know, all that kind of stuff that makes for unique pieces. Um, and in some ways, that's not a bad thing these days because if it's a unique piece, tin type or whatever, um, maybe you can get a fairly decent price on it. And then the last, uh, no, the two next things. Okay, there's just the personal reason for going into photography. And that, it, that still works. They haven't fucked that up yet. <laughs> it's still a wonderful way to increase your awareness, uh, to let you deal with beauty, your creativity, your compassion, your commitment. These are all avenues that photography um, has given both men and women, and and it. If you can figure out a way to make a living, it is, it's a wonderful life. It's a very, very rich and wonderful life. And then I'd end with the idea of community. And galleries, our local groups, um, how we support each other, nonprofits, workshops, crits, you know, are any of you in a critique group? Can you create one? How can we support our, our, our own? And, um, and I think that does start at a local level, um, but it does um, spread out from there. And I think that, I don't know if we're gonna be able to, to chip away at what's happening in the art market these days. But I think there's a lot we can do at the community level. And hopefully in today's round table, we can come up with some, some um, wonderful, useful ideas. I'll tell you just one that I have in my own history. When I was starting out, I can't remember if I was still in Chicago or had moved to California. But I had never met her before. But if I had a show, an announcement card went out. I would get a postcard from Barbara Morgan congratulating me on my show. And 
this is just the sweetest thing that it, it just came in the mail, right? And and so a few years later, I had the opportunity to meet her for the first time and thank her for this encouragement. But um, I try to do the same thing when my students have a show: is to at least send them back an email congratulating them uh, get, about getting their work out, staying active. Um, and that's just a little thing I think we can all do. So that's, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs>